Throughout the history of the church, countless questions and reflections have arisen regarding the second coming of Christ and the rapture of the church. Is the second coming of Christ really the same event as the rapture of the church? Or are we talking about two different events in God's eschatological plan? What do the scriptures say about these two manifestations? What are the essential differences between the moment when Christ comes for his church and the moment when he returns to establish his kingdom on earth? And most importantly, how should these truths impact our faith and daily lives as believers? Dear listener, in this Bible study, we will address all these questions in the light of the Holy Scriptures. Before we begin, I invite you to give this video a like and join this ministry by subscribing to our channel so that YouTube will notify you every time we upload a new video. Let's get started. The distinction between the rapture of the church and the second coming of Christ is a crucial issue in Christian eschatology and has been the source of considerable confusion among believers as well as theologians and Bible scholars. This confusion, which has been perpetuated over the years, is largely the result of a lack of clarity in biblical teaching and preaching about these two prophetic events, which are central to God's plan of redemption for humanity. Many teachers and preachers have failed to adequately explain the differences between the rapture and the second coming, leading to the spread of erroneous interpretations and the mistaken belief that the two events are one and the same. This lack of differentiation has not only caused confusion in the understanding of biblical prophecies, but has also impacted the way believers live out their faith and anticipate the fulfillment of these eschatological events. Now, the rapture and the second coming of Christ, although related in the context of the end times, are distinct events that occur at different times and for specific purposes within the divine timeline. To more deeply understand the difference between the rapture of the church and the second coming of Christ, it is essential that we clearly define both events. Since each one has specific characteristics, purposes and moments within the divine plan for the end of time. By doing so, we will be able to unravel the confusions that have arisen and gain a more accurate understanding of its meaning in Christian eschatology. First of all, what exactly is the rapture? The rapture is a future event prophesied in the Bible in which Jesus Christ will descend in the clouds to gather his church. At that time, the dead in Christ will be resurrected first, followed by all living believers who will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. This event is described by the Apostle Paul in his first letter to the Thessalonians, specifically in chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. As we notice in this verse, we have the word caught up. The Greek word for caught up is harpazo, which means to seize suddenly or to snatch away. In Latin, the word is rapio, which means to seize and carry away. It is from this Latin word that the term abduction comes. Dear listener, there is no debate among Bible scholars about whether there will be a rapture, but there has been much discussion about when it will occur. From the pre-tribulation perspective, to which we adhere, we firmly believe that the rapture will occur before the beginning of the seven-year period known as the Tribulation. According to this interpretation, Christ will come to take His Church before the divine judgments that will fall upon the earth during that time of great anguish and suffering are unleashed. This vision is based on the promise that believers will be delivered from the wrath to come and will be safe in the presence of the Lord as the world faces unprecedented judgment. Let's read 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. They also say that you are eagerly awaiting the coming from heaven of the Son of God, Jesus, whom God raised from the dead. He is the one who rescued us from the horrors of the coming judgment. Paul pointed out the essence of salvation when he said that Jesus is the one who delivers us from the wrath to come. We are saved from something, and that something is the righteous wrath of a holy God. 
Now, not all Christians share this same perspective. There are other theological schools that interpret the moment of the rapture differently. Mid-tribulationists, for example, believe that the rapture will take place in the middle of the tribulation. That is, after the first three and a half years, when the most severe judgments have not yet begun. They hold that the church will go through the first part of the tribulation, but will be raptured before the more intense judgments fall. On the other hand, post-tribulationists argue that the rapture will occur at the end of the tribulation, practically coinciding with the second coming of Christ. According to this interpretation, the church will be preserved and protected throughout the tribulation period, and only at the end will she be raptured to meet Christ, who will then descend to earth to establish his millennial kingdom. In second place, let us consider the second coming of Christ. What exactly is the second coming of Christ? The second coming is the event in which Jesus physically returns to earth, not only to gather his followers, but also to establish his millennial kingdom and carry out the judgment of the nations. Unlike the rapture, which is a secret and imminent event, the second coming will be a visible and majestic event that the entire world will witness. This event is powerfully described in Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 14, where we are presented with a vivid and grand picture then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written on him that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a garment dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven followed him on white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. In this description, Jesus appears as a victorious warrior, ready to judge and defeat the forces of evil and to establish his just and eternal rule on earth. The second coming will mark the climax of God's redemptive plan when Christ takes possession of his kingdom and brings justice, peace, and restoration to a world that has been devastated by evil and sin. It will be a moment of definitive triumph over darkness and of the full manifestation of the power and glory of Christ before all creation. Unlike the rapture, which is an event for the church, the second coming of Christ is an event visible to the entire world. This event marks the end of the Great Tribulation and the beginning of Christ's millennial reign, a thousand-year period where Christ will reign in righteousness from Jerusalem. Now, some theologians have suggested that the secret rapture has no basis in the Bible, arguing that it is a relatively recent doctrine. Some have even gone so far as to call those who believe in the secret rapture of the church heretics. However, it is important to approach these claims with caution. Although it is true that the doctrine of the rapture has been a matter of debate, it is also true that it has biblical support. Based on passages such as 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16 and 17, and 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 51 and 52, which describe an event in which believers will be caught up to meet Christ in the clouds. Now, one of the most prominent theologians who has questioned the doctrine of the secret rapture is George Eldon Ladd. Ladd, a theologian and professor of New Testament at Fuller Theological Seminary, is known for his stance against pre-tribulationism and the idea of a secret rapture. In his work, The Blessed Hope, Ladd argues that the teaching of a pre-tribulation rapture is a misinterpretation of Scripture and maintains that the church will go through the tribulation before being reunited with Christ at his second coming. Ladd advocates a post-tribulationist position, claiming that Christ's return will be a single event visible to all, where the church will be raptured to meet the Lord, but not before going through the tribulation. His approach has been influential in circles that reject the doctrine of the secret rapture, on the other hand, it is important to mention that theologians such as John Nelson Darby, a pioneer of dispensationalism in the 19th century, were fundamental in the formulation and popularization of the doctrine of the pre-tribulation rapture. Darby and other proponents of this position maintain that the secret rapture is clearly taught in the scriptures and that it is a solid doctrine based on analysis of the biblical texts. This debate continues to be a point of divergence in Christian theology, with each side presenting their arguments based on their interpretation of the Bible. 
It is important to note that the concept of the secret rapture is not supported solely by superficial studies or empirical interpretations of scripture. On the contrary, it has been upheld and defended by renowned biblical theologians, among whom is Francisco La Cueva, a prominent evangelical theologian known for his strong support of the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. In his writings, La Cueva argued that this perspective has considerable theological coherence, especially when examined in the context of dispensationalism and biblical eschatology. La Cueva believed that the pre-tribulation interpretation better aligned with the biblical teaching that the church would be delivered from the wrath to come before the start of the seven-year tribulation. His position has significantly influenced Spanish-speaking evangelical theology, consolidating the idea that the pre-tribulation rapture is not only plausible, but also biblically grounded. Francisco La Cueva was a fervent defender of the pre-tribulation rapture, and his arguments in favor of this doctrine were based on several key points. First of all, rescue of the church before the coming wrath. La Cueva maintained that the church will be delivered from the wrath of God that will fall upon the earth during the tribulation. This idea is based on passages such as 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10, which states that Jesus delivers us from the wrath to come. According to La Cueva, this supports the idea that the rapture will occur before the tribulation period. Secondly, La Cueva highlighted the imminence of the rapture as a central argument in his defense of pre-tribulationism. Imminence implies that the rapture can occur at any time without the need for any prior signs. This doctrine is based on several biblical texts that describe the rapture as a sudden event without warning. La Cueva argued that those who believe the church will go through the tribulation cannot speak of an imminent coming of Christ. Since, according to their interpretation, they must wait for the fulfillment of the prophecies related to the tribulation before Christ returns. This, according to La Cueva, undermines the concept of imminence, which is fundamental to the Christian hope and expectation that Christ can return at any moment. Thirdly, La Cueva stressed the importance of the theological distinction between Israel and the Church in God's plan. He held that the Tribulation is a period designed primarily for the restoration and judgment of Israel, as described in the prophecies of Daniel and other Old Testament texts. According to La Cueva, the Church is not destined to go through this time of judgment, but will be raptured before the Tribulation begins. This clear separation between the destiny of Israel and that of the Church reinforces his argument that the pre-tribulation rapture is consistent with the divine plan revealed in Scripture. Fourthly, consistency with dispensationalism. La Cueva supported dispensationalism, a theological school that divides biblical history into different periods or dispensations. In this framework, the pre-tribulational rapture is consistent with the idea that God deals differently with the Church and with Israel in different dispensations. These arguments helped strengthen La Cueva's position in the evangelical community, consolidating his defense of the pre-tribulation rapture as a biblically sound and theologically coherent interpretation. There are many theologians who defend this position. These theologians show us that the doctrine of the pre-tribulation rapture has solid and serious biblical support. Through their works and teachings, they present well-founded arguments based on a literal and dispensational interpretation of Scripture underscoring the theological coherence of this position within the biblical eschatological framework. Now, here are 20 differences between the rapture and the second coming of Christ. These differences highlight the distinction between these two key events in Christian eschatology. First of all, moment. The rapture occurs before the tribulation, while the second coming happens at the end of the tribulation. In second place, Visibility. The rapture is a secret event, invisible to the world, while the second coming is visible to everyone on earth. In third place, meeting place. At the rapture, believers meet Christ in the air, while at the second coming, Christ returns to earth and sets foot on the Mount of Olives. Let us read in Zechariah chapter 14 verse 4, On that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem. Then the Mount of Olives will split apart, forming a wide valley from east to west. Half of the mountain will move north and half to the south.
The scene described here has a strong dramatic charge. We believe and understand that what Zechariah tells us must be interpreted literally. The Mount of Olives is literal. The city of Jerusalem is literal. This speaks of the Lord, Jesus as God the Son, materially returning in his second coming to a material earth and placing his feet on the Mount of Olives. In fourth place, purpose. The purpose of the rapture is to take the church to heaven, while the second coming seeks to establish the millennial kingdom on earth. In fifth place, affected. The rapture affects only believers in Christ, while the second coming affects all of humanity. In sixth place, time of judgment. The rapture does not include direct judgments on the earth, while the second coming is when Christ comes to judge the nations. In seventh place, imminence. The rapture is imminent and can occur at any time, while the second coming is preceded by several prophetic signs. In eighth place, scripture. The rapture is referenced in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, while the second coming is described in Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 to 16 and other biblical passages. In ninth place, destiny of believers. At the rapture, believers are taken to heaven, while at the second coming, believers reign with Christ on earth. In tenth place, accompanists. At the rapture, Christ comes only for the church, while at the second coming, Christ comes with the heavenly armies and the saints. In eleventh place, preceding events. The rapture has no immediate pre-signs, while the second coming is preceded by the tribulation and great signs. In twelfth place, church view. The rapture is a promise of comfort and hope, while the second coming is an event of judgment and restoration. In thirteenth place, transformation. At the rapture, believers are transformed in the blink of an eye, whereas the second coming does not involve an instantaneous transformation of believers' bodies. In fourteenth place, resurrection. The rapture includes the resurrection of the dead in Christ, while the second coming may include the resurrection of the righteous who died during the tribulation. In fifteenth place, references to peace. The rapture is considered a blessing and liberation for believers, while the second coming is accompanied by wars and destruction for the wicked. In sixteenth place, tribulation context. The rapture occurs before the great tribulation, while the second coming occurs after the great tribulation. In seventeenth place, relationship to the Antichrist. The rapture occurs before the Antichrist takes full control, while at the second coming, Christ defeats the Antichrist and his forces. In eighteenth place, gathering of the elect. At the rapture, believers are taken to heaven, while at the second coming, angels gather the elect from the four winds. In nineteenth place, fate of the wicked. The rapture does not include immediate judgment of the wicked, whereas at the second coming the wicked are judged and destroyed. In twentieth place, establishment of the kingdom. The rapture does not immediately establish the millennial kingdom, whereas the second coming initiates Christ's millennial kingdom on earth. Dear listeners, understanding the difference between the rapture and the second coming should inspire us to live with fervent expectation of Christ's return. In Titus chapter 2 verse 13, we are exhorted to look forward to that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. This knowledge motivates us to live holy lives, knowing that at any moment we may be called to meet the Lord. Throughout this video, we have explored the essential differences between the rapture of the church and the second coming of Christ. The rapture is an event of hope for believers, where we will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. The second coming, on the other hand, is an event of judgment and glory, where Christ will return to establish his kingdom on earth. Dear listener, now that you understand these differences, I invite you to reflect on your spiritual life. Are you ready for Christ's return? If you have not yet given your life to Jesus, today is the day of salvation. And if you are already a believer, live in holiness and expectation, knowing that the Lord's return is near. And so we come to the end of this video. Thank you for being part of our channel. God bless you abundantly. Until the next video.